when we talk about flooding, usually the first thing we think about is precipitation, rain, snow, etc. And that short term uh, variation that leads to a bunch of rain on the plain or a bunch of rain in the stream that then in turn uh, leads to rising water levels and then flooding. Absolutely, that, that's a key issue. That's a key uh, aspect of flooding. But actually, uh, just as important, if not increasingly more important, is what we've done to the landscape. So what we've done to not so much the water falling down, although climate change is influencing that, but um, more so what the landscape upon which that water drop lands um, and, and the, the choices that we've made historically and the choices that we're currently making have a huge impact on the flooding uh, that can result from that rain. A fantastic example of what we mean by the, the complexity that comes in from our land use decisions, um, as particularly as it relates to flooding, has been provided by a First Street, this uh, national organization that works to educate people on flood and flooding and, and, and risk and way we, ways we can deal with that um, challenge. And so here they've compiled all of these different uh, private homes, uh, 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 parcels. And as we start to zoom in here on Ventura County, we can see there's certain areas proximate to rivers or proximate in the case of regular flooding or in ter terms of coastal flooding, areas right along, um, say, the coast or right along a riparian corridor that are extremely um, high risk when it comes to flooding and flood potential. And so um, now what we're looking at here is we're looking at both the property values, property locations, and the likelihood of being exposed to a flooding event um, in the next few years, in the next couple decades. Um, and so, so we, have, we can see these large scale elements of the landscape um, that have to do with uh, what we've done hydrologically. Uh, again, over here in Camarillo, um, so this uh, leisure village, this retirement area is right along uh, you know, a low spot, very prone to flooding. Um, we can see that uh, over here uh, in, in Camarillo. And uh, we can also um, take a look over here more, and this is to me a, a bit more interesting. Um, we're not looking at one particular riparian corridor per se, or one river system, although uh, we do see um, some representation that rather we're looking at housing tracks that are next to hardened concretized um, uh, 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 asphalt covered structures, either naturally occurring uh, streams, swales, etc. And so that's what we're seeing here. So if we look in this area just above campus, uh, what we see is a lot of the housing tracks here, which are, this is in a, a mountainous area, um, a lot of topographic relief here, uh, not particularly at risk, right? So um, this particular uh, location, not so much. But as we get to some other areas, what we see is we're starting to see greater risk. The houses, as we, as we go along a particular corridor, are um, demonstrating much greater risk of flooding. What's going on there is these houses over here have been built up and developed in an area where a recent development. So when we've taken the lessons that we've learned from some of our past behavior, and we've done things like create uh, less hardened landscapes, at least proximate to flooding sources. And we can see that um, uh, right around in this, right around in this area right here. So here we have a, this, the, the traditional um, uh, uh, waterway here is going through this part of the community. And some of these houses are, are nearby uh, that water uh, feature, but there's not that much risk here. That water feature, is relatively natural. We have percolation, we have riparian vegetation, etc. So here we are, we're standing here in this, in this uh, community, recently built only in the last 20 years. And here, what we've done in this riparian corridor, here at the bottom part of this particular uh, chunk of the stream corridor, we have some significant engineered facilities to deal with uh, uh, water management and, and, and flooding and things of that nature. Um, so we have retention ponds, etc. But as we spin around and we start heading up the main corridor, what you're going to see is, uh, a, a, for an urban area, a pretty intact riparian corridor. Yes, the floodplain isn't as large as it was before, uh, before the development went in, but the channel is basically pretty uh, protected. 
it's fenced off so people can't go in and mess with stuff and, and, and cut down trees or, or maybe endanger themselves by getting uh, you know kids in a channel when a flood's coming or something of that nature. But we basically have a lot of intact riparian vegetation. We have a lot of intact hydrological functioning here. So we can still, of course, get flooding here, but this natural vegetation, this natural buffering, um, uh, does all the things that most rivers do. Allows uh, water uh, percolation, it's, it's a soft bottom channel, etc. So we have a relatively low probability of flooding events on this particular structure, and therefore the houses and the structures around this uh, water body are not particularly uh, in danger of being flooded. In contrast, older sections of town, areas that were built when we had a different view of how to deal with water in the landscape, um, are, you know, for example, let's look over here on um, right here. And what we see with these houses right here along this a uh, uh, concretized channel, much higher risk. And as that continues on uh, to the rest of the town here, we see all these homes are at elevated risk of flooding because they're located adjacent to box culverts, hard impervious concrete surfaces. The more traditional way that we've dealt with flood risk is to do hard engineering approaches, hard engineering solutions. And that's what we're looking at right here in this traditional so-called box culvert because the sides are straight up and down, the bottom is poured concrete. So this structure is designed to capture all the water that is running off of homes or whatever the development is and throw it as far away as possible. In this case, it just rained yesterday and so there's a little bit of water in here but most of that rainwater has pulsed through. Much of what we're seeing right now is uh, lawn watering, people watering their houses, uh, their, their, uh, washing their cars and things of that nature. So this box culvert uh, dramatically increases flood risk. So the houses around this particular structure, all of these are in the high flood risk area. Why? Because when we do have a downpour, we've lost all the riparian, all the natural vegetation, all the ability of water to percolate in the, the channel. Um, and instead, everything is capped, everything is sealed. And so when it, we do get a pulse, that water is gonna flow much higher, much faster, and there's a much greater risk of that water jumping out of the channel and therefore flooding the adjacent homes and, and or road in this case. So all of this, old approach, which was deemed a great thing to, to rapidly remove water from the surface, we now recognize as um, bad ecologically, bad for flood risk, and bad all around in terms of not only um, not solving problems, but actually creating additional problems, creating additional risk, in this case, in the form of flood risk. And the very last component of flood risk that we want to think about has to do with not only those bad engineering decisions, but those bad engineering decisions that are made worse by lack of maintenance. And so here, what we're primarily talking about are flood control structures, um, levees being the classic example that were put in, have induced people to move in, build houses, put structures in to an area that uh, otherwise would be in a floodplain. Um, with, uh, under the understanding that, oh, this, this protection, this levee structure will keep me safe. So therefore we can go ahead and do all this development. As a consequence of not maintaining these, we've gotten ourselves into some serious problems. Now in the wake of Hurricane Katrina, um, there's been a national effort to reassess our levees and see if they're okay, if they're uh, functioning properly. And what we found is many, many, many levees across the U.S. are not um, either are not functioning properly or are at risk of failing under a flood stress. And so that's what we're looking at here, the result of this assessment in Ventura County. We have some levees along our, our, our river corridors that are green, meaning uh, it's all good, no particular risk, and they seem to be functioning to um, hold back water and will continue to hold back water in a flood context. Uh, yellow are areas that were problematic, but we've um, are actively engaging in repairs or, or um, um, innovations. And then 
uh, red, which are the problematic areas. The most high profile one in Ventura County is VR1, which is in on the Ventura River, basically downtown to the Pacific Ocean. It's about a 2.65 mile length. Um, efforts uh, to, to deal with the VR1 problem began in about 2010 and have been continuing. Uh, where we are right now is um, finishing the EIR component. So we've not yet gone to construction, but we're, we're getting close to doing uh, the repairs. In this case, the repairs being different um, uh, uh, repairs in some cases, in other cases, some additional structures to deal with floods, both in terms of the waterway, in terms of the levee proper, and in terms of the uh, railroad tracks that go alongside the um, the, the river. And so, so we have the problem at, but that, that's uh, a key problematic area, but we have these red zones across the county, all over the place where we have, um, levees in need of significant, um, repair and attention. So again, the last component of this, not just the rainwater, not just the choices we made in engineering, but the failure to maintain those engineered structures also bring increased flood risk and also have to factor in, to our thinking and planning in terms of dealing with, forecasting, responding to flooding.